Hello friends and this is the second part of the tutorial for beginners in SketchUp for the web. So be ready as we will start in very very few seconds. Arcs In this chapter we are going to explore the arc tool. It's not hard to use it but there are four different ways and they are all displayed below the line tool. So, I have prepared these exercises for you to practice, but in this tutorial I will just teach you how the tools work. Let's go! I'm going to activate the option above, Arc. And the process is, click for the center point of the arc. Choose the first point, and in this case I'm going to follow the red axis and type a specific distance for the radius, 2000 mm. Then I need to click for placing the second point or type a specific angle. Here I'm going to move the pointer closer to 90 degrees and you can see that it snaps to that point which is a quarter of a circle. And then I'm going to draw a line from there until the center using that inference point. And as you can see this could be a perspective of a door in a floor plan. Then, if I want to connect the points below with a line, it creates a face automatically. Important note, when I type the angle, it's along the direction where my pointer is. Even I am drawing clockwise right now, I need to type a positive number, this time 30. Now let's move to two point arc. It's the second icon and the shortcut is A. I'm going to draw an arc between the extremities of this line and then I need to type the bulge, which is the distance from the middle of the two points and this height. For the example here I will type 500. Now look at the next example, this time I want to add the same two point arc but on the other side. First I click in the first point, then as I cannot snap the second point, but you can see that if I drag the pointer along the edge, I type 700 and I can make the second point start from there. Finally, just need to specify the bulge. The third type of arc is the three point arc. This one is very intuitive, as we only need to click on three points and the only possible arc generates. Let's do it for these three endpoints. I'm going to choose the tool and finally I click on all the points. Now I want to show you a second example and the arc will have this shape. The last type of arc is called pi as we create something like pizza slices, as you can see in the example here. The method is the same as for the standard arc. We have to specify the center point, then I have to place the first point by specifying a radius, and for the second point I'm going to type the angle which is 30 degrees. The difference here is that I create an area with the segments that border the arc. For the second slice, I pick the same center point and this time you can see that when I'm close to the direction of the last line, it snaps to it, so I just need to type the length. Then I also make a 30 degree arc and finally I just need the last slice and the angle is again 30 degrees and look that it matches the green axis, as the total angle is 90 degrees. Now, I want to show you a characteristic about arcs that also applies to circles. After making the arc, you might notice that it's actually a group of segments of lines. When I select it, now this one was split in two because of the intersection with the line, and go to the entity info, you can see the number of segments here. Now there are 8 and in case you want to confirm, you just count them. If I increase the number to 20, the segments become smaller. 
and it's harder to notice the vertexes. Of course, if I change it to an even bigger number, the arc now is very smooth, looking perfect with this zoom. Then I set 30 for the arc at the left, remove the line, and look that both arcs automatically merged, and the number of segments is now the addition of the 30 segments from the left and the 60 from the right. Now you may ask yourself, for what reason SketchUp divides arc and circles in segments? Good question, and this is regarding the usage of RAM memory. If you have a lot of circles in a project with a big number of segments, the workflow may slow a bit. So, the point here is to specify the minimum number that it still looks like an arc. Another important tip. The higher the angle, the higher the number of segments we should use. In the next chapter we are going to start making some shapes. And let's start with the circle. So, this one is pretty easy. Just click on the button below the arcs and find the icon there. I just need to place the start point and specify a radius. Let's use 200 mm. Then, like the arcs, I can see the number of segments there on the entity info, which currently is 24. So, in reality, what we draw here is a regular polygon and the value means the number of edges. Look, if I change the number to 5, now we have a pentagon. If I change it to 6, we have an hexagon, or to 4, a square. Now one tip here. When drawing the circle, I can increase or decrease the number of segments or edges by pressing Ctrl plus or Ctrl minus. Actually, there is also the Polygon tool, and it's a bit better to use it to draw any kind of polygon, like hexagon, octagon, decagon, etc., because there are two ways of drawing. The default one is inscribed in a circle, and if I press the button Control, we switch to Circumscribed About Circle. Rectangle tool. It's the first icon in the same group of tools. And the way to draw it is simple. Put the start point, is one of the corners, then type the value for the red axis, comma, and specify the length of the green axis. Another way to draw a rectangle is placing the start point in the center of the figure. Press the button control, click for the start point, and then, to specify the length of the sides, it's just the same process. Also, while drawing, when the shape is close to a square, look that it snaps to have the edges equal. But this time, let's draw a rectangle, with 500 per 600 mm. Now, it's time to start modeling objects here. And probably the most important tool for doing this is push-pull. The way it works, it's actually very simple. However, there are a couple of constraints that's important to be aware of them. Go to a face, click on it, and you can see I can generate a specific height along the blue axis. I type for example 500 mm, and now we have a solid. Then I can do the same for the circle, I click to push it, type 1000, and this time, this is a cylinder. Now, let's draw a line in the middle to divide this face in two. Then I can also add an arc here at the top. So, if I use push-pull in one of the faces, it only applies in that one. Then notice if I want to do the same for the one next to it, up to the height of the connected solid. So I have to click now, but it's not a problem because then I can push it further the height that I want. 
The face where I made the arc has the same constraint. I cannot push it further the connected solid, so like before I have to do the process twice. Now let's learn some important tips. I cannot use push-pull in lines. Suppose here I want to make a face perpendicular to the green-red plane, it doesn't work. What I can do here is connect a line between these two points to make a triangle and now I can pull the figure up or down. If I erase, if I erase one of the faces, for example select this one and press delete, I can see what it is inside. But of course, now this is not a solid anymore. They are only four faces connected to each other. But to convert this to a solid again, it's still possible. I can draw a line in one of the edges at the top and look that the solid is brought back again. Ok, now let's see the tool offset. This one works for faces and also for lines, but in this case we need to have at least two of them connected. But first let's see how it behaves for faces. I'm going to click in this area and what this does is copying the lines in a constant distance. And it's possible to offset this polygon inside or outside. Let's say I want to offset inside with a specific distance, for example 50. Ok, now let's try to offset these lines. And ah, it looks like that I cannot. Because in this case we need a different method. We have to select the lines first and then activate offset. Now I pick up a point and then I type an offset distance of 100 mm. Now look at this different example, this time I'm picking this point and notice also that the offset line depends of the distance from the original lines. In the second example, as there are more segments here, look how it behaves for this situation. Before proceeding to the next tool, follow me, I want to make a short introduction about drawing in the third dimension, the blue axis. We are going to make this example that only has lines. I hover this point, drag to the right and start the first line along the green axis, which has a length of 800 mm. Then the next one is along the red axis and I'm going to type 700. Then, as I need the next line to go up, I press escape, click in the point, and then find the blue axis. Hmm, but as it's too close to the green axis, in order to avoid clicking in the wrong moment, I'm going to rotate the axis a bit, so it's going to be a bit better. Type 800 and press enter. Then the next line is parallel and has exactly the same distance as the line below. When I snap to the red axis, I press shift and click on the end point below. Then for the last line, I'm going to use the same method but along the green axis. Ok, I have finished and you can see both figures are identical. Let's go to the next example. Here, I have a circle and a line along the blue axis that starts from the center. This is easy to draw. I'm going to use the circle tool this time, hover the center and drag along the red axis to place the center of the new circle. Then type the radius, which is half of the diameter, 400 mm. Then, for the line, it's better if we hover the boundary first, so it will be easier to find the center point. Then draw this line with the length of 600 mm. Now I want to show you the follow me tool. I'm going to draw another line to join to the border of the circle, it doesn't matter the location, and then connect with another one to the center in order to form a triangle. 
then I go to this icon and find the follow me tool here. Let's select the face and I'm going to make a solid by following an arc and if I want to make a cone here I just follow all the border until I reach the start point again and I have now this beautiful solid here. Now let's see the next example. We are going to use this figure, then I'm going to apply follow me to model this polygon around the circle, which its center point is outside of that figure. Yes, the follow me tool only works when after picking a face, we drag the cursor along a path and it can either be lines or arcs. However, for better results, try to drag the pointer as closer as possible to the path, so the extrusion is going to be easier. Here, for example, I cannot do anything until I put the pointer along another object. In this case that I have a rectangle below, I can use follow me in the same way as I did for the circle. Then if I stop anywhere, I can continue later creating a second solid next to the former one. One important tip, it's not required for the face to be perpendicular with the path. If it's tilted a bit, like here, I can still model it along the line. And even the path line doesn't need to intersect the face. In this situation, I model the figure using the perpendicular distance from the line. So, it's all for now. Please proceed to the next part and subscribe to Cat in Black if you haven't done it yet to get notifications of new releases. So, see you in the next video.